All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Powerball ball python. The Powerball is actually the super spot nose. It contains two copies of the co-dominant spot nose gene. And as a matter of fact, if you look at just the spot nose by itself, it looks like almost a normal classic wild type ball python with a really cool head stamp. Usually you can tell it's a spot nose from the head stamp or the kind of the crazy pattern on the head. If you take two spot noses and breed them together, you get the Powerball, which is a really incredible looking snake with a really jumbled up pattern and it's really visually dominant. So you work other genes into a Powerball and a lot of times the Powerball can mask a lot of those genes. But kind of the cool thing I like about the Powerball is one of my favorite combinations is the spot nose combined with the leopard. You make the spot nose leopard, which is a really amazing snake. You get really jumbled up pattern, really clean background and a really high contrast in that spot nose leopard combination. And if you take a leopard and cross it with the spot nose, nose, 25% of the time you get the leopard spot nose. But if you use a Powerball and breed it to a leopard, your chances go from 25% up to 50%, making a spot nose leopard combination. Pretty powerful breeder. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to show you how we can mix other genes in with the Powerball and how it works well with other genes and some of the potential and some of the limitations of the Powerball ball python. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna start with the spot nose. This is what a spot nose ball python looks like. In a first glance, you'd probably think, hey, that looks kinda of like a normal ball python, except the head stamp, the pattern on the head kinda of gives it away. All the spot noses usually have kind of an interesting head stamp and in your normal classic wild types, usually it's just kind of one color all across the top of the head. The spot nose has been around for quite a long time and the prices are pretty reasonable as a matter of fact, if we look at the price on this one, this one sold for $75. Pretty inexpensive. As a matter of fact, if you're buying a snake over here in Morph Market, you'll probably pay $75 just for shipping on a lot of these snakes. That's so probably like $150 for a spot nose getting it over here on Morph Market. And if you take two spot noses and you breed them together, 25% of the time, this is what you get. You get a Powerball. Take a look at this crazy snake. And the Powerball is a really visually dominant snakes. You mix other genes into it and a lot of times it'll overwhelm a lot of the other genes in it and it's really visually striking too. You can notice a lot of them have this really strong stripe right down the top of the back and it's not really a well-defined stripe. Usually it's a really wavy stripe with a lot of times it has little bubbles in the stripe right down the back and a lot of times the power balls have a lot of high contrast between the lights and the darks but they also have a lot of pixel in the side so it's not you know as, as clean as a lot of the other snakes it kind of has a lot of pixelation it's kind of common with a lot of these powerball combinations and if you're wondering how much a powerball is i didn't even look at this price this one is four hundred dollars of course this sold way back in 2015 uh, i haven't really looked at some of the latest prices on these but a lot of people are interested in you know some of these prices and how much these combinations sell for so i kind of want to show you what happens when we mix other genes into the Powerball to make some combinations. And the first one I want to show you is mixing pastel into it. And this is what a pastel looks like. Pastel is probably the most common morph in all of ball pythons. Sometimes it can be really super bright yellow and sometimes it can be kind of a washed out yellow. It really depends on the line of pastel. And usually with pastel you have some pattern reduction as well. So a lot, in a lot of combos with the pastel, sometimes it'll jumble up the patterns. So here's what happens if you mix pastel in with the powerball take a look at this crazy snake you get the pastel super spot nose really amazing combination the first thing that strikes me is how the head is just really crazy on this you kind of almost lose the head stamp and you get this really almost like it almost looks like a clown combination head almost looks like a pastel clown head on this pastel super spot nose and you can tell it really keeps some of the pixelation in some of the some of the yellows on the side and you still have this really jumbled up stripe coming right down the top of the snake pretty awesome 
So here is a Mojave. The Mojave is in the blue at leucistic. You breed two Mojaves together, or if you breed a Mojave to anything else in the blue eyed leucistic, like Russo or Lesser or Bamboo, and you end up with an all white snake with bright blue eyes. Pretty awesome morph. And here's what happens if you mix Mojave in with the Powerball. Take a look at this. It almost looks like a regular Powerball. You can almost see the Mojave kind of breaking through a little bit. I think you can see maybe a little bit cleaner of a pattern working Mojave in, and it kind of changes some of the patterns. You almost get these almost like floating alien heads with the Mojave, and you can definitely tell the Mojave's in there. Maybe it cleans up the line a little bit more right on the back. Makes for a really interesting combo. So here is the fireball python. The fire is actually in the black-eyed leucistic complex. So you breed two fires together, you get an all-white snake with black eyes, which is one of my favorite combinations, especially with a lot of the super fires. You get a little bit of yellow coming right down the top of the snake, which is really awesome. Here's what happens if you mix fire in with the powerball. Take a look at this crazy snake. You get a fire super spot nose, and at first glance this almost looks like a a regular spot nose like the spot nose almost completely devoured the visual appearance of the fire which is kind of interesting usually fire in a lot of combinations will really lighten and clean up the background in a lot of combinations so it's kind of interesting that in this specific combination the fire really isn't acting like I would expect the fire to act in this combo so here is a calico ball python. The calico is an interesting morph. You, you breed a calico to something else, half the offspring come out as calico, it's, it's co-dominant. So the calico, essentially what it does is it brings up the white on the sides of the snake. Sometimes you can get a really high expression calico or a high white calico, and sometimes you can almost see just a little bit of white on the bottom or you can almost hardly tell that it's a calico. I'd say this is a really nice looking calico. And here's what happens if you wear calico in with the Powerball. Take a look at this. This is kind of an interesting combination. So it really brings up a lot of the white up the belly, up on the sides, which is kind of cool. and really starts cleaning up the sides, which makes for a really interesting combination. Still really keeps this really awesome head stamp, the, head, the pattern on the head of this combination. So here is a banana slash coral glow. <laughs> a lot of people think the banana is the same thing as the coral glow and essentially they look the same and when you breed them, the, there's the male makers and the female makers, pretty much interchangeable banana and coral glow. A lot of people separate the two lines. Some people think that one line is a little brighter than the other, although I've seen really bright coral glows and really bright bananas. I think they're pretty much interchangeable. And here's what happens if you work the coral glow slash banana into the Powerball take a look at this and the banana is really visually dominant you can see it almost <laughs> gives the powerball a run for its money and you can definitely see the influence of the banana in this one you can definitely see the powerball kind of breaking through you can see the line right down the back as a matter of fact the banana almost removes the line from the top and brings a lot of the color in there makes for a really awesome combination so here is a killer blast, and when it comes to powerballs, I kind of you know skip ahead from the single genes and go to a lot of these multi genes because there's not a lot of examples over here. The powerball is not really that common, and there's not a lot of examples over here on Morph Market. As a matter of fact, I was looking at the ones for sale. I think there was only a handful of powerballs that were actually for sale over here on Morph Market. So I'm kind of you know grasping at straws, you know, going to the multi gene combinations. So essentially, what this is is it is a killer blast which is also the same thing as a super blast which is essentially the super pastel with the pinstripe so it makes for a really interesting combo this is really visually dominant too because the pinstripe by itself is really visually dominant and here's what happens if you work the powerball into the killer blast this is what you get you get a powerball super blast and take a look at this it almost completely eliminates the power
power ball is really kind of you can kind of see the visual dominance and kind of the level that it ranks on the scale of visual dominance I'd say you know usually your albino and your champagne really overwhelm everything and kind of below that you get you know like the banana the coral glow the bamboo are really super visually dominant and this is kind of lower on the scale you know with the with the super blast and the pinstripe where you can a lot of times you can see stuff kind of bleeding through if you're kind of interested in making a whole video on kind of the level of the visual dominance of all the morphs which ones are most visually dominant and which ones are the least when you mix it in with other combinations it's kind of interesting and this is really awesome because you have a super blast that kind of changes the color and appearance when you're working in the super spot nose you can definitely tell the super spot nose is in the mix kind of breaking through the super blast makes for a really awesome combo so here is the black pewter. The black pewter is an interesting combination. As a matter of fact, this is the black pastel mixed with the pastel. So remember, the it gets a little bit confusing. The pewter is the cinnamon with the pastel, and the black pewter essentially replaces the cinnamon with the black pastel. The black pastel and the cinnamon are allelic. So essentially, there are similar lines of almost the same genes. There's definitely differences between the black pastel still in the cinema. So this is the black pewter. Black pewters are really visually dominant as well. So if you take the black pewter, it's a really beautiful snake and there's a lot of different variations of the black pewter because the black pastel can really vary from one version to another. And this is the one that's probably as closest to the one that I found with the Powerball mixed into the mix. And you can see how, how clean the lines are and how clean kind of the floating alien heads are on this one. And if you mix it with the Powerball, Ball. Take a look at this. It almost retains the same color, which is kind of amazing. And you really get this jumbled up line right down the top of the snake. You can definitely tell that bubbly line is from the Powerball, the super spot nose. And you can see it kind of pixelates some of the patterns on the sides as well. It makes for a really interesting combination. So here is the GHI yellow belly. GHI is a dark morph and you mix it in with a lot of other combinations. And a lot of times the GHI will really darken the background of combos. And when you mix it with yellow belly, you get this really stunning high contrast between the yellows and the darks. Just by itself, this is a really amazing snake. And here's what happens if you mix the Powerball in with the GHI yellow belly. Take a look at this crazy snake. <laughs> that is really awesome. Essentially what it does is it really jumbles up the GHI yellow yellow belly and it really keeps the really high contrast and you see the really dark background. It's kind of hard to see on this one because the picture is a little bit smaller but you can definitely tell that is a really amazing snake. As a matter of fact I was wondering how much this one was. How much is this one? This one is $1,800 pretty hard to hit because essentially this is five genes. You have two copies of the spot nose, then you have the yellow belly, the pastel, and the GHI. So if you bred this to something else, it'd be pretty hard to reproduce this one, especially since it has a super in the mix. So if you actually bred this to like a normal ball python, you couldn't reproduce it unless you bred it to something that has already has one copy or maybe two copies of the spot nose. So here is a firefly yellow belly, which is a really bright snake. So essentially what this is, this is a fire with the pastel, which is the firefly and the yellow belly. Probably the three brightest genes that you can mix together to make a really super bright yellow snake. Really awesome combination. And here's what happens if you work the powerball into the firefly yellow belly. Take a look at this. This is kind of kind of surprising combo. As a matter of fact, it almost like really jumbles it up. They almost work together really well where you get, you can definitely see the influence of all the genes working together and mixing it up really awesome. And kind of the cool thing about this, so for example, you know, when I was talking about making leopard combinations, you could start with something like this, the firefly, yellow belly, power, power ball. So this has the fire, the pastel, the yellow belly, and two copies of the spot nose. So if you bred this one to a leopard, here's one of the combinations that you could actually get from that. Take a look at this one. <laughs> this is really amazing. You would actually get, uh, with the super spot nose, you get 50% spot nose leopards which are really awesome by themselves and then you mix in the pastel and the yellow belly and take a look at this thing this 
this is really screaming. This is what I'm talking about, is using some of these as potential breeders, mixing it with leopards. As a matter of fact, I'd probably, you know, you can almost base a whole rack just on this project using uh, the Powerballs, breeding them to leopards. Now, it's kind of interesting, you know, this one's Het Clown, and keep in mind on this one, this one's going to be really expensive because uh, the leopard, uh, the, the leopard spot nose clown is the uh, is the Batman, which is a really sought after combination. So this one is actually two thousand two hundred dollars because you know people are going for the Batman combos with this. This is kind of the potential of working into even a higher end project with the clown. All right, so it is time for the question of the day, and uh, Blaster asks. Have you ever lost a snake in your house? And uh, Blaster also says that he lost a ball python in his house and found it in the toilet bowl reservoir. And I started scratching my head thinking, how in the world do you lose a ball python and then find it in the reservoir of your toilet? I don't know how it would actually get in there. You must have a kind of a weird setup where you have this, the ball python enclosure next to your toilet in the bathroom. That is a kind of a crazy story. As a matter of fact, I did lose a snake here in my house, I lost a California king snake, one of the black and white ones, and I lost it when it was really super skinny, like the size of a pencil, maybe even skinnier than a pencil. And what I did is I put that that snake in my ARS 7030 rack, definitely not the appropriate size, but it's the only tub I had for any of my snakes. I was kind of limited on space. I put them in there, and I didn't realize that there was enough space between the tub and the rack that he could crawl out from in between the tub and the rack. As a matter of fact, he got out once and I found him on the floor. I started thinking, man, I must, must have left that rack open a little bit. Or maybe he got out when I was feeding or spot cleaning or something. So I picked him up off the floor, put him back in my rack. And then a few days later, he just completely disappeared. And then I found out that there was a little spot, a little space in that rack between the tub and the rack where he could actually squeeze out. And I looked for him for a long time, for months and months, and I never did find him. And here it is like four years later. <laughs> I still have not found that king snake here in my house. It's pretty crazy. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.